The Gaia Hypothesis Are we at one with the Earth? Is our relationship with our planet symbiotic? This may sound like the ramblings of a dirty, tree-fondling hippie, but the idea to which we are referring is a genuine scientific theory put forward in the 1970s by chemist James Lovelock and microbiologist Lynn Margulis. In recent years, this theory has been tested rigorously, with mixed results leading to an uncertain conclusion. So let's investigate what we know and what we don't know about the Gaia hypothesis. Number 3. The Theory Also known as Gaia Theory, Gaia Principle, or Gaia used to hang out with me but I stopped when he wouldn't quit touching me. This idea originally proposed that our planet's habitability was regulated by the presence of life. Specifically, that living things help maintain certain processes which make the Earth livable. This was later expanded to include all Earth systems, not just those affected by living creatures. Chemical reactions, physical forces, biological entities, and human sentience all reportedly contribute to the sustainability of our world. Organisms co-evolve with their environment by influencing it, and this, in turn, influences their evolution through the Darwinian process. We are not individual organisms living on a rock. We are all part of the same system, including the rock itself. You, trees, algae, oceans, pigeons, hurricanes, walnuts, giant clams, and uranium are all one single self-regulating entity with one aim to maintain the conditions for life. Gaia doesn't claim this entity has consciousness, but it does ascribe a common goal to all living things along with Earth's processes. The Gaia theory also stops short of referring to the Earth in humanistic terms, which is tempting given the similarities. Like Earth, humans have living things in and outside of our bodies which help keep us alive, but we have little to no control over how they work. Still, the Earth is not considered alive in the sense that it has a human-like mind or that it is one single entity. It may be more accurate to describe it as a hive mind, a collection of organisms, processes, and other things which all buy into the same idea that life on our planet must go on. Number 2. Atmospheric Evidence the Gaia Principle could be seen as nothing more than an attempt to reframe how mankind sees the Earth, how it sees itself, how we think about the environment, and how we treat all life throughout the world and beyond. Indeed, James Lovelock admitted he'd made a fudge up by calling it the Gaia Hypothesis in the first place, since this reference to a mythical Greek goddess who personified the idea of Mother Nature hardly inspires scientific confidence. It's like having a theory of how the moon is made of something different and calling it cheese-based inquiries of a distant cheddar world. Nevertheless, while the Gaia hypothesis was initially criticized, it is now studied seriously as a testable explanation for how Earth works. The theory states that Earth is regulated by life and its own processes at every level. The biosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere, and the amusingly named pedosphere which is the top layer of Earth's soil, not somewhere Chris Hansen would go looking for creepy guys packing Mike's hard lemonade. Because Gaia makes specific claims regarding the processes going on within these layers, we can investigate them using rigorous scientific techniques. For example, we know that living organisms affect things like the atmosphere. The photosynthetic bacteria present during Earth's Precambrian stage completely rejigged our carbon dioxide and nitrogen-heavy atmosphere into the oxygen-rich one we enjoy today. Gaia states that Earth's current atmospheric composition is kept steady by the presence of life which requires this specific composition, since all atmospheric gases other than noble gases are either made or processed by such beings. Gaia also rejects claims that Earth's stable atmosphere is due to chemical equilibrium like it is on lifeless planets. Oxygen is highly reactive, 
and it should have combined with the gases and minerals found in Earth's atmosphere and crust. And yet, the only place where the Earth is suitable for most plants and animals is down in the lower reaches of the atmosphere, where living things interact with it. Further support for Gaia is given through the involvement of living organisms in the carbon cycle, with various organisms including lichen, algae, and coral reefs taking a major part in the process alongside carbonate rocks and those giant earth zits we call volcanoes. These organisms have evolved to take part in this process and, in turn, the Earth has furnished them with the conditions they need to carry on living. Number 1. Get Salty More evidence in support of the Gaia hypothesis can be found within Earth's oceans and through the measurement of our global temperatures. It has now been noted that ocean salinity has remained steady at 3.4% for a long time, despite the fact that by now, River salts should have made them saltier than an InfoWars Twitter thread. Gaia proponents believe the explanation lies in bacteria colonies, who may work to form salt plains, thus lessening ocean salinity. A theory proposed by Kenneth J. Sue even claims that the discovery of large salt formations at the bottom of the Mediterranean have transformed it into Earth's Gaia kidney with later studies indicating that huge depositions of salt like this take place every 100 million years or so. Regarding temperature, Sue also points to how Earth's oceans have never been too cold or too hot since life began as further evidence for Gaia. Sue believes Gaia is endothermic. It absorbs heat, since all life on Earth has been composed of a succession of organisms which either cooled or heated the planet depending on what was needed. When Earth was too warm, Air conditioning organisms, like anaerobic bacteria and trees, brought the temperature down. In contrast, during ice ages or when someone left the front door open, methanogenic bacteria and even Homo sapiens could be said to be working to warm things up. Since life began on Earth, the energy output of the sun has increased 25 to 35 percent. Conversely, Earth's surface temperature has remained habitable. This is similar to what happens within the human body, with various homeostatic processes beyond our control working to keep us at the temperature we need to remain alive. In further support of these theories, Lovelock cites several tests ranging from the Viking Mars missions of 1975 through to ocean land selenium transportation experiments performed at the dawn of the millennium. Still, the naysayers are not convinced. Stephen Jay Gould believes Gaia is merely a metaphor for how a habitable, life-sustaining world works. Evolutionary and molecular biologist Ford Doolittle also says there's no genetic evidence to suggest the existence of the unconscious feedback loop responses Lovelock believes are crucial. Furthermore, professional troll and occasional plaything of President Garrison Richard Dawkins contends that organisms acting en masse to regulate the Earth requires foresight and planning, which our current understanding of evolution directly contradicts. More recently, arguments against Gaia have focused on life forms which actively wreck their environment rather than regulating it. There has even been a counter-theory proposed called the Medea Hypothesis, which claims life is detrimental to the maintenance of habitable planetary conditions. And if you consider how much damage man alone has caused to the habitability of our own world, this argument seems hard to disagree with. There is no doubt that all organisms react to their environment, not that many are capable of affecting it. But the idea that both are involved in a direct and continuous feedback loop needs more investigation. And if one day the Gaia hypothesis is ever proven true, Mankind will need to reconsider its place in the world more than ever before. Because, according to some observations by Gaia proponents, Earth is more than willing to dispense with our kind. We're going to investigate this possibility in our bonus video, Dispensable Humans, which you can watch in our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then bullshit. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth. 
to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strange mysteries.